Welcome to this edition of the Western Officiating Branch Partnership. Today we're going to talk about the many facets of communication and how it helps us become successful officials. Communication for us as officials takes on many elements and relationships. We have communication with coaches and assistant coaches. We also have to be able to talk with the players and communicating with our own teammates is perhaps one of the most important and most overlooked elements of good communication. Communication really begins as soon as we enter a building and much of that communication is nonverbal. Are we dressed appropriately? Do we have good body language and present ourselves in a respectful and confident manner? Once you're on the ice, a large part of a communication is through signals and body language. So it's important that we work on these skills as well. Our comportment and how we talk and interact with participants in the game is of great significance in how we are perceived, how we build respect and how we're able to manage and control the game. Let's get some thoughts and video examples from our partners. I think you have to be a good communicator. Uh, it shows that you're human. It also shows that you uh, command respect, um, but at the same time, you will be respectful of teams and coaches. Um, if you can communicate with teams and coaches, then um, you know it, it, it develops relationships, it develops rapport, and it only helps you down the road because you might have to use that communication tool that you have to diffuse a situation at a later date. I think communication is important because you have to be able to get along with the other participants in the game to show that you're uh, in charge but also to show that you're not um, unreasonable and that you can't uh, ask a question, they can't ask you a question without you uh, throwing the rules right down their throat. You have to be able to establish a rapport and uh, give and take is important. The original hook, and then we got them for a charge for the late hit on the half wall at the whistle. You can let people know that um, that that you're human and that you're there working with them. And uh, you know, if you don't, if you're not able to communicate with the players or the coaches, uh, it's going to be a long night, no matter how well you're you're seeing the game, because. Everyone, uh, it's, a, it's an extremely emotional game that uh, communication is, is something that you need to bring every single night. You're trying to let everybody know that, that you're, still, you're still human, you're still like them, um, you're approachable. I think it's, uh, it's a way to ease a lot of conflicts. Um, rather than button heads with people, you let people know that you're personable, you can be talked to and you can have a conversation with them. Right, also if he comes in hard on you, like if it's up like in your midsection, like all that, but it's all on your pad there, right? So you got a little pad in there, but we'll get you, we'll get you. If you can communicate well, and, and in, in amongst team too, even, even the officials, if you can communicate well, um, I believe that's the component that when things do maybe go wrong, you can you can talk to someone, you can work it out. They they feel they've been heard, and they can go on. So it's it, first and foremost, you have to be comfortable. You have to be confident with yourself when you're approaching the bench, especially as a young official, uh, knowing the right situations to approach the bench. And another thing that's very important is when you go over, to re re remain calm because if you go over and you're a little bit hot and the coach is a little bit hot, it just escalates and then. Usually what you're going for, your message is, is completely, it's completely uh, useless because, uh, because of the emotions involved. I had this guy jumping early. I had him jumping early out, out of the gate here. Yeah, but that's a defenseman changing for a defenseman. Well, I got a guy here and a guy on the bench. Right? Fair enough. If that's the case, then I apologize. There's other subtle forms of communication too. Posturing can be a very important part of how you communicate with people. Someone's sense, whether it's a coach who's on the bench or a player who's on the ice and you're having a face-to-face -face conversation, um, it's not only the words that you're using, but the tone in which you communicate in or the, or the body language that you use. Body language can be, become really important because the way you carry yourself can kind of send a message about how engaged you are in in the game. Things to do to, to build rapport or to build that communication early it would be uh, beginning of the game to, if you don't know the coaches, to go over and introduce yourself. Make sure you know all the coaches' names, all your key players. Make sure you know your key players' names, guys that may cause you problems, captains, assistants. 
and use those names when you're communicating with those players to just establish and build that rapport, build that respect level. I think you know the biggest thing is to, to have that eye contact. If, if it's a minor thing, sometimes you can have that conversation without anyone else in the building knowing. Uh, you don't have to be facing them, just say, listen, I hear you. You can be looking at the play or looking at the face-off maybe and, and talking. Uh, and you get that same point across. I think you have to stand up for yourself when it's required and at the same time admit if you made a mistake or, or maybe you know didn't see something the way the coach saw it uh, and let them know that. Let them see the human side of it but at the same time you know stick to your guns if, if, if need be. They're your family. The more you communicate, the more that you're, you're talking with them and spend time with them. It's, it's built, all built on trust and when you're out there with your three other teammates with complete trust in each other, um, then you know exactly uh, what a guy's thinking and what he's looking at and, uh, and you know that's irreplaceable uh, when the game's moving so fast. I think communication with partners is, is key. I know for us, um, now at the professional level, we, we discuss a lot, even starts at lunchtime. Uh, we talk about game participants, things that happened previous games, um, just even unique situations that we've had that have come up and that might come up. So I think it just prepares you uh, for situations that may occur or may not. I think we'd all rather come into a game and be over-prepared than under-prepared. Between officials, I think communication is probably our biggest asset we can have. Um, we're a team, just like the two teams were working. So the more uh, we're in tune with each other, uh, we, you might not agree with everything that your teammates have to say, but at least if you're communicating and open to communication between the teammates, um, it kind of gives you a sense of direction on how that game needs to be officiated, managed, um, able to put out hot spots if need be or to sit back and let the game evolve if, if that's what that game requires. So I think it's important that we stay together as a team uh, and keep those communication lines open. You know, you don't ever want your first conversation with, with a coach most importantly and, and often with a player to, to you know, be um, to be getting mad at them for something. So I always like to open up the communication with a coach, whether it be saying hello to them, how's it going, how's the road trip going, and at least then you start off the night with uh, being a human and having some rapport before you're having to talk to them about a, uh, you know, a long line change or too many men or something where all of a sudden you're, you're giving feedback in the negative way. So I, I often try to uh, communicate as a human first and then we can get into the game level, but at least we've started off the game with, uh, with some form of uh, just complete personal conversation where at least they, they know that uh, you're into the game, that you know their name, and uh, you can build off of that. With officials working multiple leagues, it's important to establish an open line of communication with the coaches and players early in the game. Sometimes it might be a team we see for the first time, or it could be teams we see infrequently. We need to use opportunities we have early in the game whether that be a line change or subtle conversations we have during stoppages. This will allow us to form a relationship and build some respect and rapport with the teams. Let's hear from some of our partners and see some in-game examples. No, 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 just a collision. No, just a collision. You good, bud? Did he snow you or it was a chest? I didn't think he snowed you. He got it a little bit, but. No, no! Yeah. Pretty, pretty clear from up top? Yeah, I got like six inches on okay. the crossbar. Might be worth it to have a look. For sure. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, man, if I was a little bit late there, I got stuck in the corner because that guy, first guy, wheeled off that way. So I wanted to make sure he had it, okay? That's a pretty aggressive line there, eh? Just make sure we don't get the goal, that was good. So I talked to uh, 26 from Lethbridge, and that scrum down there, I said next time I'm going to take you. He, he, come he, he just stays there, oh, and then okay, he grabs a uh, Calgary D-man and keeps pushing him in towards the net, so he just doesn't leave, right? We hope that seeing some examples of in-game action 
as well as great advice from some very accomplished officials. We'll give you some insight into how to effectively communicate with the people involved in the game. Communication is a skill that can be worked on within the hockey environment, but also on a daily basis in our life outside of hockey. Think of the conflicts we have in our personal life, issues we have to deal with that are not always easy. Those are opportunities that we have to learn how to communicate better without even realizing it. I would suggest seeking out conversations that are outside of your comfort zone and working on those skills. Doing this will not only help your fishing skills, but it'll help you in your everyday life. One interesting statistic to hear is some professors believe that 7% of communication is verbal, 93 is nonverbal. The nonverbal would include body language and your tone of voice. We wish you the best of luck in the upcoming games, and we'll see you again soon.